Because as you pray for her, you're going to get healed too. Just don't move. Just don't go anywhere. And I command right now this distortion to be removed right now. Go. Be removed. I break the curse off your life, off your eye. Hallelujah. Now go ahead and check. Look at Abraham again. I just saw his eyes a little bit. Every, I see her eyes too, actually. Behind? Oh my gosh, behind Abraham. That's that's Letty, Letitia. He's smiling. I see his teeth, I think. She's smiling too. Yes, you see their teeth. Oh, I see it. I see it. Oh my goodness. Praise the Lord. Vibrant. Everything looks more vibrant. You look way more vibrant. You can see. You can see. But I don't want you to go anywhere. They're going to just finish. Bold Amen. Prayers, bold results. I'm decreeing over you that even in this year, there's going to be bold prayers that get answers. In this year, there is a sound of abundance of rain in the midst of your life, in the midst of your children's lives, in the midst of your family. There was a sound of abundance of rain because God's already spoken. It means God doesn't take a break. He doesn't sleep and he doesn't slumber. Get behind me, Satan. Blood. One drop of the blood is powerful. One drop, that's all you need. How many words does he need to speak for you to get up and take that word and say it's mine? So any place where the fear, unbelief, would try to regain itself, out in Jesus name let the devil be more afraid of you than you think you are of him every diabolical establishment be utterly destroyed up by the fire of God Satan in their lives is being destroyed right now for the word of the Lord is spoken in the name of Jesus take your defeated self Satan and walk on away because you can't have our family and the word will not return void the breath of the Lord has spoken. He's waiting for you to rise up and speak bold prayers. We shall see with our eyes the recompense of the enemy. In other words, it's payback time. He's actively, actively watching, looking down over the curve of the earth. Who is it that's standing on my word? Who is it? Oh, there are they. There they are. There they are. Man, they're still doing okay. I'm watching over my word because I'm going to perform my word in their life because they're actively pursuing me and they will not quit. Bold prayers, bold results. That's what I titled tonight's message. Bold prayers, bold results. Isaiah 40, verse 8, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. The word of the Lord stands forever, church. Can I hear you say that back? The word of the Lord stands forever. The word of the Lord stands forever. So we're going to put our confidence in the God of salvation, the word of the Lord. Amen. We serve an unfailing God whose word will never return void. We know that. We have seen this in operation. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not say it shall not. It shall not say it shall not. It shall not return to me void. Say it shall not. It shall not return unto me void. Say it. Bold prayers. Bold results. Let the timidity become, come off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Any place of timidity, let it come off right now. Bold prayers receive bold results. Uh, amen. Isaiah 58, 11, but the rest of it. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I, the Lord, sent it. Amen. We serve an unfailing God whose spirit breathes over us, giving us life. Uh, we serve. We serve the God who breathes life. He's breathing life over you now. It wasn't just a one-time event. Isaiah 47 and 8. I'm going to do 7. Okay. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the breath, the breath of the Lord blows upon it. I'm going to read that again because I read to you verse 8, but now I'm jumping to verse 7. It's similar, but it's a little different. The grass withers and the flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. The grass and the flowers, that is symbolic of us. What fades, but yet the breath of the Lord blows upon us. Do you know that tonight the breath of the Lord blew upon us? That is exactly what happened to us tonight. It goes on, surely the people are grass and the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Let the breath of God, 
Let the breath of the Lord blow through you, blow upon you. The breath of the Lord speaks his unfailing, eternal, all-powerful word. Amen. Amen. So when you decree with boldness, when you decree God's word with boldness, you are speaking, you're letting his spirit breathe through you and move mountains through you. His spirit, his breath. Hebrews 4, 6, Hebrews 4, 16 says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Call upon the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire. He is God. Is the God who answers by fire is God. His name is Elohim. He's the all-powerful creator, and he answers by fire. And there has been some fire that has been deposited even tonight. There has been some fire because we're calling down the name of the Lord, and there has been some fire that is literally causing you to become on fire by casting out things that needed to go. Amen? Let every demonic altar in your life be consumed by the fire of God. According to 1 Kings 18 and 24. According to 1 Kings 18 and 24. Let every demonic stronghold in your family be cut down and destroyed by the fire of God. How many of you have faith to receive this tonight? Okay, amen. Let the fire of God right now destroy that assignment coming against your son's life against your daughter's life, against your grandchildren. Let the fire of God, we call it forth, we decree that spirit's assignment to be removed right now in your marriages, in the name of Jesus, in your health, in the name of Jesus. No, you're not going to lose what you received here tonight. Let the finger of God and the fire of God drive away every place of unbelief, every place of double-mindedness, for God does not do things half-heartedly. He does not start something and then not finish it. So any place where the fear, unbelief, will try to regain itself out in Jesus' name. Absolutely no place for you, devil. Amen. Amen. There is death and life in the power of the tongue, right? Amen. We shall decree and declare bold prayers just like Elijah did. Amen. Just like Elijah did. James 4, 17 and 18 says this. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And it says, and then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced fruit. James 5, 16, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So I'm decreeing over you that even in this year, there's going to be bold prayers that get answers. In this year, you've been praying and praying, but this year, if you take what I'm telling you and let the bold prayers, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much, if you take what I'm telling you and take it to heart and do what I'm saying, get, let the Holy Ghost rise up on the inside of you and get a backbone and recognize that it is God's bold prayers spoken out of a bold, fierce warrior that's going to make the difference. Amen? You are making a difference. Stop settling. Stop settling for Satan's work. Stop settling for the devil's leftovers in your life. Kick those things out. Kick the devil. Why is it okay that it's just barely enough or just barely got healed? That's like settling for leftovers. When God's setting a banqueting table and it's the best of the best. Right? My, yeah. Amen. So the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. The prayer of faith is powerful, church. The prayer of faith is effective, right? The prayer of faith will heal the sick. The prayer of faith destroys bondages. The prayer of faith casts out demons. That's what we do as believers, right? So what was Elijah's prayer of faith? 1 Kings 18, 41. 1 Kings 18, 41. This is Elijah's prayer of faith. Are you ready? Go up, Ahab. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain in the midst of the three and a half year drought. In the midst of nothing, in the midst of no motion, 
in the midst of the same old, same old, same old, he gets up and he says, go up Ahab, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He did not hear the sound of abundance of rain. The prayer of faith is speaking what God spoke, and you don't need the earth to confirm it. You speak it, and you let God confirm it. Elijah, do you see the rain? I mean, it's a bold statement, isn't it? It's a bold statement. Get up, Ahab. Go eat and drink. There's a sound of abundance of rain. Elijah, do you see the rain? No. Do you hear the rain? No. Do you smell the rain? No. But yet this man prayed the prayer of faith. And I'm telling you what the prayer of faith is. In faith, he stood on the word of the Lord. There was a word that the Lord spoke to him already in 1 Kings 18 and verse 1. The word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord so, said to him in 1 Kings 18, verse 1, in the third year, Elijah, I will send rain on the earth. How many words of God do you need before you get up and pray the bold prayers of faith? How many words does he need to speak for you to get up and take that word and say, it's mine? You said in the word that the blind shall see, it's mine. Is that not your word? Isn't that your word? You said that the word says, all of my children shall be taught of the Lord. Isn't that your word? Are you taking that word and say, oh, I'm not going to settle for anything else. You don't have to see it to decree it, do you? You decree it because God already spoke it. But that's what Elijah did. What is the prayer of faith? He is speaking what God has already said with bold, accurate faith and knowing that that is the faith that's going to move mountains. Amen? Amen? This is a good time. And so the bold prayers, the effective prayer of a righteous man availeth, your prayers availeth when you pray bold prayers that God spoke. Amen? Give God the shout. Got to get some Holy Ghost Pentecostals in this church. Got to shake them up a bit. Elijah would not take no for an answer. That's the difference. Elijah would not take no for an answer. He wouldn't. He was not going to, he sent his messenger not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five, not six, but seven times to go check for that rain. And what was Elijah doing? Praying. Standing on the word of God, praying. Go check again. There's nothing. Wrong answer. Go check again. There's nothing. Wrong answer. Go check again. And he kept on sending his servant again and again. Seven times. On the seventh time, he says, well, there actually, something's shifting. That there is a cloud as small as the man's hand, but it's rising up out of the sea. Ooh. Woo! Ooh. Hallelujah. You're going to pray like Elijah prayed, church. You're going to learn to pray like Elijah prayed. There is a sound of abundance of rain in the midst of the, of the drought. There is a sound of abundance of rain in the midst of the drought in your life. Amen. Do you hear it? Yes. Even if you don't hear it, decree it. There is a sound of abundance of rain in the midst of your life, in the midst of your children's lives, in the midst of your family. There is a sound of abundance of rain because God's already spoken it. I decree right now over your loved ones. I'm going to make some declarations. I decree right now over your loved ones that the highway of our Lord God, according to Isaiah 43 and 4, makes straight. Make straight the desert of a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. The crooked places shall be made straight. Come on. The rough places shall be made smooth in the name of Jesus. They are lifted up from every demonic place, every place of depression. They are being lifted up right now. Every place of compromise, they are being lifted up right now. Every place of settling. Satan in their lives is being destroyed right now. For the word of the Lord is spoken in the name of Jesus. We decree crooked places are being made straight in their lives right now. Every crooked scheme, every diabolical establishment be utterly destroyed by the fire of God. Every crooked place in their lives utterly destroyed by the fire of God. That means every demonic spirit that's trying to assault them be removed in Jesus' name now. We will not tolerate anything else. What is that? That's a bold prayer of faith. Bold prayers get bold answers. For we shall call upon the name of the Lord our God. Who is the God who answers by fire. Woo! And then he fills us with the fire of the Holy Ghost. 
He answers by fire by destroying every demonic assignment, but then he fills us with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah. Woo. I prophesy that the strongholds in your family's lives be removed right now, that every spirit of homosexuality be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of perversion be moved right now in the name of Jesus. Every place of all of us have sexual abuse be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Every place where your children and your children's children are being violated be removed right now and destroyed to pieces. That spirit be destroyed to pieces. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy the crooked thinking and crooked, perverse emotions and crooked, perverse, seductive lifestyles be made straight, according to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. I decree the spirit of pharmacia, drugs and drug abuse and alcoholism be removed completely from your life and your family's life and every lying spirit that has gripped them with a stronghold and has seduced them into thinking that this is okay and it's too late and it's never going to change. I cancel the lying spirit and we command it to go right now and we decree the fire of God to destroy that thing in Jesus' name. We rebuke you, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Stop waiting for God to say the things you need to say. Stop letting, stop waiting for God. Well, I'm going to just wait. Jesus, Jesus rebuke you. You rebuke the devil. You open up your mouth. You do what you need to do. God's already said, I've given you power and authority. He says, all authority is yours. I've given it to you. You're going to trample down snakes and scorpions. You're going to, no matter what the enemy has planned, it's not going to harm you. Nothing, nothing will harm you. Get up and rise up on the Holy Ghost. Some faith and destroy that assignment. Let the devil be more afraid of you than you think you are of him. You shouldn't be afraid of the devil. He should be afraid of you. So the blood speaks, the blood of Jesus, that is, speaks a better word than the blood of Abel, according to Hebrews 12, 24. The blood of Jesus still speaks. We decree that blood. One drop of the blood is powerful. One drop. That's all you need. Just one drop. The blood still speaks. Church. See, not only do I hear the sound of abundance of rain, but I hear the blood that's dripping, 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 and I speak it over your families. It's the healing blood. It's his blood that heals. It's his blood that restores He's restoring you right now. He's restoring your family if you have faith to receive it. I destroy every yoke of resistance and every place there's of division. There's, there's a divisive spirit there, and that's it. It's like a wall. And no matter how hard you try, there is just no communication. Am I speaking to some of you? Mm-hmm. There's been lying spirits that have just, it's like layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. You don't even know what the truth is anymore. It's like confusing. It's so confusing. And I know I'm speaking to some of you guys right now and, and others, you know, every, you guys, other things will match for you. But I'm telling you right now that that spirit right now of division be removed from your life in the name of Jesus right now. Let it be removed from your life in the name of Jesus right now. Let the finger of God and the blood of Jesus utterly destroy every place where the enemy tries to bring in that division, that divisive spirit, that spirit that's prideful and tries to rise up and tries to, try, tries to basically mock you and mock your God. It's a mocking spirit. Let it be removed right now in Jesus' name. It doesn't get to have its place, church. I apply the blood of Jesus over you right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let every spirit of pride and rebellion and animosity against you and against the Lord God that you serve be wiped out completely by the blood which still speaks. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you, and you can't have this church, and you can't have these people, and you can't have their families, and you can't have the online church. You can't have them, for they are walking in the word of God, and the word will not return void. Amen? No, Satan, you can't have our families. No, Satan, you can't have our children, nor our children's children. No, Satan, you can't have our spouses. No, you can't have our health. No, no, and no again. Amen? Take your defeated self, Satan, and walk on away because you can't have our families. Nope. 
I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how bad it looks. You can't have them in Jesus' name because we take back what belongs to us. We take it back every single person. We, take, we call back their purity. We call back their innocence. We call it back. We call it back washed in the blood of the Lamb. We call it back. Come on, call it back. Call back their wholeness. Their wholeness, body, mind, soul, spirit. Their wholeness. Call it back. We call it back that their hearts in simple faith, simplicity, simplicity unto Jesus. Get out of our homes. Leave them at the night. Nightmares and night tears. We rebuke you and we command you to leave their bedrooms right now, devil. Every spirit of perversion go right now. Leave out of our homes and out of their homes in Jesus' name. Isaiah 54, 13 says, we shall decree, we decree that all of our children are taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. We decree the word of the Lord. We decree that all of our children are taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. Right? Amen. The Lord will contend, which means he will fight. Okay? He will fight against those who are fighting against you. The Lord will contend against those who contend against you. And your children he will save. The Lord will fight against those that are fighting against you. Are they fighting against your, the enemy coming against your children? That means the, Lord, the enemy is fighting against you. If, they're, if the enemy is, is coming against your loved ones, that means the enemy is coming against you. But the Lord says, I will fight. I will contend. I will fight against those who contend or fight against you. And your children, I'm going to save. Come on, it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. There's proof right there. That's the proof right there. Hallelujah. Because he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on your children, and I will bless your offsprings according to Isaiah 44.3. Isaiah 44.3. If you're taking notes, write this down, or you're going to have to listen to the replay. You're going to have to listen to the replay, but I'm telling you right there we go. Isaiah 44, 3. I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants. That's a promise. He is not, God is not a man that he should lie. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. So the breath of the Lord has spoken, church. We, we started off with the breath of the Lord. The breath of the Lord has spoken. Amen? His unfailing word has spoken. The fire has been released. His spotless, perfect, powerful blood has been applied. Hallelujah. And Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. I've already read to you what the word of the Lord says. God is not a man that he should lie. We already heard what the word of the Lord says. Amen? Nor is he the, nor, nor a son of man that he should repent or change his mind. That's what that means. When you repent, you change your mind. You go the other way. So God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind, that he should repent, right? Amen. Has he said and will he not do? Has he spoken and will he not make it good? In other words, has he not spoken and is he not going to bring it to pass? Yeah. He spoke it already because it's written down in the word. And will he not bring it to pass? Of course he'll bring it to pass. He's waiting for you to rise up and speak bold prayers. Rise up and speak bold prayers. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear. Isaiah 59.1. Surely, say surely. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save your children, your family, your spouse, your health, your loved ones, whatever it is that you're praying and standing in the gap for. Amen. So his arm is not too short, nor is his ear too dull to hear. Jeremiah 1 12, you have, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. But the Amplified Bible says, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word. That means God doesn't take a break. He doesn't sleep and he doesn't slumber. That means he's constantly watching. He's actively, actively watching, looking down over the curve of the earth. Who is it that's standing on my word? Who is it? Oh, there they, there they are. There they are. Man, they're still doing it. Okay, I'm watching over my word because I'm going to perform my word in their life. Because they're actively pursuing me and they will not quit. That's what that word means. He's watching his word. He's looking over the curve of the earth, watching over the word to perform it. Pretty powerful and gets us pretty excited because we realize all we have to do is grab hold of the promises of God, which are yes and amen in him. They're yes and amen in him. Woo! We're having some church. It is done. 
It is written, it has been spoken, and it is established forever. This is what the word of the Lord says. It is done. It is complete. We shall see with our eyes the recompense of the enemy. In other words, it's payback time. It's payback time. If they're going down, yeah, the enemy's going down. <laughs> the enemy has a reward, you know. The enemy has a reward. Yes. According to his deeds, he shall receive wrath. Oh, it's not my words. These are not my words. Isaiah 59, 18. Let's turn. Here we go. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury, which is wrath, to his adversaries. Recompense to the enemy. Hallelujah. He will fully repay. So the enemy has a reward, you know, and it's not good. It's the wrath of God. Woo, hallelujah. But as for you, as for all of us, Psalm 91, 8 through 10. Psalm 91, 8 through 10. As for you, only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. Only with your eyes. You're going to look and see. But it's going to be the reward of the wicked, which you are, we already identified what that is. It's the wrath, right? Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, and we'll end with this. Pray the prayer of faith. Pray the prayer of faith. Stop letting the devil beat you up and kick you all around. Stop letting... Him, his, his kicking you around, defeat your children and the things that God has given you. Stand up. Decree truth. God's word is truth. Everything else is a lie if it doesn't line up with the word of God. So as Elijah was a man just like us, and he boldly declared, you shall boldly declare a thing, and it shall be established. Job twenty two twenty eight. 28, right? Your work will be rewarded, church. Your work will be rewarded. Your children are coming back from the land of the enemy. They're coming back. For the breath of the Lord has spoken. There is hope in your future. According to Jeremiah 31, 16, and 17, there is hope in your future. Say it over yourself. There is hope in my future. No matter what, I'm standing on the word of the Lord. There is hope in my future. And all of my family and family's family, I am carrying the baton. You're carrying the torch. You're not going to drop it. You're going to carry Carry it, and you're going to pass that baton, church, in the name of Jesus. Pray the bold prayers, and you will see bold answers. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. Woo. Praise the Lord. The breath of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Hallelujah.